Welcome back. We have another uh, anime to D and D homebrew kind of style thing. Uh, this time, I've created the demi human from uh, Rising of the Shield Hero. Uh, let's just dive straight into it. Uh, demi humans are a race who whose basic physical appearance is humanoid, but not includes distinctively non-human elements such as animal ears and tails. Uh, some demi humans have bestial transformations, making them very effective at fighting in certain kinds of environments. Aquatic um, demi humans are great at fighting in the sea. Desert adjusted demi humans are great at fighting in very dry and hot environments. Tropical and forest based demi humans are great at camouflaging themselves and adapting to wild, very wild conditions. Appearance and physiology. Demi humans appear closely similar to that of a standard human, are often referred to as near human, which is why they are referred to demi humans. Uh, physical differences between these creatures and standard humans are slight. Demi humans have distinctively non human elements such as animal ears and tails. Quite often, demi humans bear strong traits toward their uh, creature type. Uh, these individuals may display heavy coverings of fur or digitrait mobility uh, are also common traits. So like um, where like animals have like back hinge legs, kind of like ostrich legs, that kind of style thing where like they're almost like forearms rather than back arms, like with dogs and stuff, stuff like that. Uh, your demi-human character has certain characteristics in common with all other demi-humans. You have an ability score increase or um, uh, that increases your ability scores overall. Your dexterity score increased by one. Uh, age is uh, Demi-humans reach adulthood in their late teens and live less than a century. Uh, Demi-humans vary widely in height and build uh, from rarely 5 feet to well over 6 feet tall. Uh, regardless of your position in that range, your size is medium. Uh, your base speed is 30 feet. Uh, you have dark vision, so you can see in dim light up to 30, uh, 60 feet as if it were bright light and in darkness as if it were dim light. Uh, you have heightened senses. Uh, you're proficient with the perception or insight skills. Uh, languages you can uh, speak, read, and write common, and one or language of your choice. And then we have uh, five sub races. We have the Genmu, the Hakuku, Hakuku. I, I, I never know how to pronounce it. Uh, Nui, Orca, Shusak, Shusaku, and uh, Tanuki. I'm so bad at pronouncing these. <laughs> Should have practiced before I started this, but oh well. Uh, the Genmu. Uh, Genmu are very similar to um, Tortles from 5e. I've to somewhat skinned them to, to be similar to them, but there's slight differences here and there. Uh, Genmu is a race of turtle like demi humans, the creatures have leathery reptilian skin and shells that cover their backs and bellies. The race can be close, closely associated with one of the four legendary beasts, the Spirit Tortoise. Genmus have no hair, their skin is mostly olive or blue green. They're Back shells are usually shinier and darker than their skin, while their front shells tend to be lighter with a yellowish cast. Again, whose mouth is beak like and toothless and can deliver a vicious bite. You have an ability score increase, your strength score increases by two. Uh, you have a shell, so that gives you a hard shell that protects you from harm. Your armor class is equal to 13 plus your con modifier. Uh, then you have a bite attack. Whenever you hit an enemy with a melee attack on your turn as a bonus action, you can make a melee attack against the same enemy. On a hit, the target takes 1d6 plus your strength modifier as piercing damage. You are always considered proficient with this uh, as a bonus attack. And then you have the survive survivalist, uh, so you're proficient in the survival skill. I cannot speak at all today. Uh, then we have the Hakuku. Um, Hakuku are a race of demi-humans with white tiger features. The creatures are cat-like in appearance with slight high-set ears and feline facial features, so kind of extended, and sometimes they have uh, the whiskers that pop out of their cheeks or uh, kind of scarring marks, looking like kind of like Naruto, the style, like the three things. Um, uh, along digitrate legs, uh, the race can be loosely associated with one of the four alleged guardian beasts, the white tiger. Um, hakukus are slender and covered in spots, spotted or striped fur. Like most felines, hakukus have long tails and retractable claws. Hakuko uh, fur color ranges from icy white to brownish red. Hakuko eyes are slitted pupils and they are usually green or yellow. Uh, you have an ability score increase, your charisma score increases by 2. Uh, you have quick claws. Because of your claws, you have a climbing speed of 20 feet. In addition, your claws are natural weapons, which you can use to make unarmed strikes. If you hit with them, you deal slashing damage plus 1d4 plus your strength modifier instead of the bludgeoning damage for a normal unarmed strike. Um, Eye of the Night. If your Hakuko ancestry grants you superior vision in dark and dim conditions, you have dark vision up to 120 feet, which you can see in dim light as if it were bright light, and in darkness as if it were dim light. Uh, you can't discern colors in darkness, only shades of grey. Uh, then you have Eye of Fear. Uh, you know how to use your cat-like eyes to demoralize others. You gain proficiency in the intimidation skill. Uh, then we have the Nui. Uh, Nui are 
a race of demi-humans with dog-like features. The creatures have dog-like ears and a tail with furred forearms or hands. Uh, Nui's are extremely tall with the average member of the race standing on average between 6 and 7 feet tall. Though Nui's are relatively lean for their height, weighing usually between 280 and 320 pounds. So quite quite uh, light for that kind of build. They cut an impressive visage. Nui's skin can be slightly greenish or grey in colour. And their furry hides can be a lightish lightest to dark brown uh hues maybe blacks and grays but but normally in that brownish uh hue standardly um and they're sometimes marked with spots or stripes uh, and you have an ability score increase your strength and constitution modifiers increase by one uh then you have keen hearing smell you have advantage on perception checks that rely on hearing or smell uh then you're a natural digger you have a burning speed of 20 feet and uh you're you're relatively tough you have a hit point maximum increased by one and increased by one every time you gain a level uh then you have bite uh, so once again, same as the Genmu, whenever you hit an enemy with a melee attack on your turn as a bonus action, you can make a melee attack against the same enemy. On a hit, the target takes 1d6 plus your strength modifier as piercing damage. You're always considered proficient with this attack. Uh, then we have the Orca. Orcas are demi-humans with killer whale features. The creatures have certain traits deriving from the species evolving, living in coastal areas or polar areas, diving into sea and other bodies of water. Uh, orcas have no hair. Their skin is smooth to the touch, very leathery, kind of like like a whale um the skin is black and white they have patches around their face appearing like eyes similar to how most killer whales and orcas are um orcas are hulking semi-aquatic humanoids they can quickly dive deep into the sea to hunt for their favorite foods they are remarkable for their ability to focus their echolocation to track on their prey similar to how uh, other porpoises dolphins and killer whales do in real life uh, ability score your constitution score increases by two you're a natural swimmer you have a third swimming speed up to 30 feet echolocation the orcas gain blind sp blind sight up to 15 feet or 30 feet in water obviously they have that bit of a the sonar naturally kind of travels a little bit further in water than it would through air uh, due to their aquatic origins the orca cannot be can uh, cannot use its blind sight while deafened uh, and then they're predators of the depths adapted to even the most extreme ocean depths you have resistance to cold damage and ignore any of the drawbacks caused by deep underwater environments so like if you have restrictions on swimming or using uh, certain weapons and then you can hold your breath up to an hour and then we have the shusaku and then i chose this photo which i i really like bird person from uh Rick and Morty. Uh, the Shusaku is a demi-human race with avian-like features, covering feathers covering their bodies, and they have long, narrow legs that taper towards the, their sharp talons. The race can be loosely associated with one of the four legendary beasts, the Phoenix. Shusaku are brightly colored with features of red, orange, or yellow. They can spend hours in the air, sometimes go as long as days, locking their wings in place and letting the thermals uh, hold them aloft. In battle, they are prone to they prove dynamic and ac ac acrobatic flyers, moving with remarkable speed and grace, diving to lash opponents with weapons or talents before turning and flying away. Uh, your ability, you have ability score increase. Your in score, uh, intelligence score increases by two. Uh, you have a flight, uh, flight ability. You are able, to f you have a fly speed of twenty or thirty feet. You cannot use this speed if you're wielding heavy armor. Uh, then you have talons. Uh, your talons are natural weapons which you can use to make manu uh, make unarmed strikes. If you hit with them, you deal slashing damage equal to one d four plus your strength modifier instead of the bludgeoning damage normally for um, an arm unarmed strike. Deceitful voice. You have proficiency in deception skill. And then finally, we have the tanuki. Tanuki are raccoon-like uh, demi-humans that specialize in illusion. Ooh. They specialize in illusion magic. Uh, they are often physically well built and come in a variety of colors such as black and gray, auburn and dark magenta, and a red and brown like being a few types. Uh, Tanuki are a secretive race that like to roam at night. Those who roam in the day are more brave and adventurous type of kin. Uh, they rarely trust outsiders, but if they do, they will show them nothing but affection and gifts, usually food. Uh, ability score, your wisdom modifier increases by two. Uh, your agile, you have proficiency in the acrobatic skill. Uh, nimble, you can move through space, the space of any creature that has a uh, size larger than yours. Uh, Mirage, you can cast a mirror image spell once with this trait requiring no magical components or material components, and you gain the ability to cast it this way when you finish a long rest. Wisdom is your spellcasting ability modifier for the spell. And then you have Tanuki Eyes. You have advantage in all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against illusion magic, which is kind of seems fitting for their um, the racial kind of benefits, like especially to how Raphkalia is in the anime and the uh, books. Her ability to see, kind of see through the spells and misinformation that's being casted upon uh, people that are being casted with those kind of spells. 
But yeah, um, I'm going to have a link in the description below where you guys can download this and check it out if you want. Uh, feel free to use in your games. Um, obviously, some of them are a little bit... I've kind of tweaked certain aspects, such as the Gemu, that kind of I took inspirations of that from the turtle because they're essentially the same kind of creatures of sorts. Uh, obviously, the Gemu have a little bit more, and then the turtles are a little bit more, more hardier in in D, D in comparison to these guys and then we have the if you guys know it's the nui uh, a little bit of this uh spiel is kind of uh, lifted from the gnolls obviously adapted to be more suitable for nui um i feel like they maybe could do a slight tweak but i think the way they're set up now they're quite it's quite suitable for them um and then we have the shusaku um they're very uh once again another creature that's basically very similar to the arakokura um, so I kind of took a little bit of liberty to kind of copy from them to an extent because their abilities that they have based in the show or based in the the books and the manga are kind of similar to fall into the same kind of category. So rather than having two very separate creatures, probably I should have maybe a little bit more separate or uh, differentiating features, but they do kind of fall into the same categories, but they're very similar. But yeah, uh, if you guys want to check it out, download the link below. It'll take you to... Uh, Google Docs page that you can download and if anyone wants uh, the actual Word document just comment below and I'll be able to upload a copy of that as well but uh, yeah thanks everyone for watching hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time bye